This episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast is brought to you by Nomadicare. Now, personally, I love Nomadicare, I've used Nomadicare, and I recommend the company to all new travelers. What Nomadicare does is it takes the fear out of getting set up with a bad recruiter, which is the biggest fear that you have jumping into this journey. So they sit down, they interview recruiters, they vet them, get them on a list, and then provide them to you as a free service, as a free recruiter matchmaking service in order to get you started on your journey. Now, usually you only get two recruiters going through Nomadicare, but being a listener of the show, you can get three. So this is how it's going to work. You go to nomadicare.com slash Dylan. You will get set up with three recruiters to be on your dream team, as well as a guide to get you started on your journey. Jaime, can you please tell the listeners where we're at in the world right now? We're right now at Pinal, California, which is a small town, northern East Bay, across the way of San Francisco. Welcome to another episode of the New Medical Nomads Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Dylan Callier. Uh, today, we are talking about what it is to be a good host at an Airbnb and what it is to be a good guest at an Airbnb. And today, I'm with my current Airbnb host, Jaime. Uh, Jaime, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, kind of where you're from, how you came to California? Good. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, originally from Mexico, we migrated to El Paso, Texas from the other side of the border. And then we lived there for about 20, 25 years. And when we get the chance to move to other state, we decided to come to California. So this is the state that we like it very much. And everybody seems to mm-hmm. agree with me and <laughs> the family. So we came, there, come, came, came here. Yeah. And all your guests seem to seem to agree as well. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. every time that we have a new guest uh, for different reasons, they come to the Bay area, but uh, all of them agree that California is a good mm-hmm. state. Mm-hmm. Now I'm super embarrassed because I've been pronouncing your name as Jamie <laughs> for 10 weeks now that I've lived with you <laughs> instead of Jaime. Um, <clears throat> But I guess that's that's kind of uh, the the fun of living in somebody's home, especially um, with all the different cultures you have coming in, because it's such a tourist hotspot here that you're having people from Europe and like all these all these like otherworldly places, and it's really really cool. Um, how and why did you get into being an Airbnb host? Well, uh, actually, we had been thinking about since our children left the house. We were thinking about having guests in the in the house, but uh, we didn't know how. Uh, we heard about the coach surfing, and we didn't like the idea because it was a little bit more like a hippie people <laughs> looking for a couch, and we were not <laughs> looking for that. But um, then I got involved with real estate businesses, and actually, it started as an experiment. We wanted to see if Airbnb was going to be a business model for us. Okay. And we're still gathering information and experiences to see if this is going to work. Uh, next step maybe is to buy or rent other houses and, mm-hmm. and uh, staging them. And, and, and the difference will be that we are not going to be living in the house mm-hmm. like in this case. Right, right. But that, okay. that's mainly the reason. Yeah. Um, so you and Andrea are here you're having uh, people come into your home. Were you guys nervous at all about letting others yeah. in, the, in the house? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. There is, there is always the issue of, uh, of um, I don't know, you want, to, uh, you want to be keeping your privacy. Mm. But also I think that one needs to be a open-minded person. So if you want to experiment and see how it goes, mm-hmm. you can, you, there is no other way but to do it and in our case yes at the beginning it was kind of nervous like anything that you knew that you start <laughs> uh, i remember me and andrea hearing that door opening and saying oh maybe they need something and, and we were ready to respond to them <laughs> right because we always believed that we needed we, we were providing a, a service mm-hmm. with this uh, model and no they were just going to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> so uh little by little we start to understand the different personalities and different uh, purposes of the people there there are people that are just coming for the night and they will spend the whole day out uh people that are like you walking mm-hmm. nearby and mm-hmm. and uh commute uh, to to the house and their, and their work 
but most of them are tourists. We have been having people from Australia, Germany, Spain, England, uh, Hawaii, different places actually. This is wow. a very tourist uh, location and seems like this is a good spot because of the, it's not exactly in the city, but you mm. can enjoy everything. Right. Yeah. It is a really good location for that. Um, I was so worried about traffic when I came to the Bay and then I was so happy to find out it's only like five minutes away and there's like zero traffic between <laughs> yeah. where we're staying now and um, where I'm currently working. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're fortunate, you're fortunate <laughs> because uh, the average community in the Bay Area is an uh, hour, hour and a yeah. half. Yeah. That's, that's, oh my gosh. Coming from Missouri, that's nuts. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, how, how is Andrea, um, was she more nervous about letting pe persons into the home or were you more nervous or? I was the, yeah, the one more were. nervous because I always uh, value my privacy and you know, I didn't want to, I don't know. Uh, again, we were used to share the house with our children. Mm -hmm. Now they are on their own. Mm -hmm. And um, and all of a sudden, the house where it was empty and very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we are having these uh, people from different parts of the world, you get to know them and experience these different things. Uh, it makes more friends. Not yeah. everybody is open to a friendship, but those that do, uh, we still receive uh, emails from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and actually, one of one of the visits that we have. They still keep sending uh, German beer. Oh, wow. <laughs> we like it very much. So we spend a very nice evening when they were here. And, and, and that's, that's the kind of thing that Andrea and I value yeah, uh, yeah. from this experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you have, so you have two rooms here that you allow guests to stay in. Um, and it's almost like your own mini hostel where you're having people coming in and out. And you do, like everybody I've met so far has been super nice and just uh, really friendly and when you're receiving those messages on the phone, do you screen people or how, how, how have you been so fortunate to get well, these personalities uh, in? The Airbnb has an, an application. The application will let you be choosing your guests mm. or uh, they have what they call like, I guess, the automatic uh, booking in which as long as the date and the room is available, they can book your room. Mm. No questions asked. And then you need to rely on their uh, background check that mm. Airbnb does for every member that wants to go to a place. Okay. Uh, but uh, we have learned that not having the auto uh, booking allow us not only to screen them, but also to start, to start establishing a relationship with them okay. right in, from the first moment. Mm. Okay. It's, it's different when a robot is saying you're booked <laughs> than when the owner of the house is telling you welcome how are mm. you we're here for you do you have do you have any special uh, uh, needs uh, mm -hmm. do you know the area for how long and not because I want to know exact everything they they're going to be doing but do we want to be sure that they will be uh, comfortable yeah. while here yeah, absolutely. And that was one of the first things you did when I showed up on the first day was here, here's a big list of stuff that you can do. Here's a uh, De Castello. Here's the the book of the castle with all the wine. Um, you should go to Napa. You should go to these places. And uh, it was really just uh, something that I wouldn't have got if I would have found a place on my own and just showed up. Um, you can always find it online but it's always nice to have somebody here yeah. that knows all the hole in the wall places like that pizza place i went to last week mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that i that i wouldn't have you know gone to if it, if it was just me on my own um and your your messaging when i i was probably talking around i i just send a, a blank message or not a blank kind of like a hello this is me this is what i'm at um this is how long i'll be staying um to all different uh hosts and you and Andrea were the most prompt with returning. And then also sometimes you get a weird vibe <laughs> from some of the hosts and they, they ask um, kind of off-putting questions or you ask a question, they ignore the question. Um, but that, that definitely wasn't the problem with you guys. Um, so I would say that's, that's what makes a good host. What would you say makes a good um, guest in your house? Well, I guess guess is uh, starting from the same point. I think uh, if you start making honest questions, like again, I remember when you start uh, writing to us, 
and uh, you were asking for very specific things like if I remember well correctly it was something like uh, about commute about um, even be able to receive visitors in the mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. and because you you were going to be a long-term stay we wanted to make sure that you feel confident mm -hmm. staying with us so uh, I think that uh, even though different uh, hosts are going to be re reacting differently uh, if you make the, on the honest question mm -hmm. then you will get the feeling right. and from our and that uh, we're gonna be really looking into a person that okay he's interested he likes the place he likes the location mm. and we're just trying to see if we can uh, connect because mm. we're gonna be living under the same room for mm. 10 12 weeks mm -hmm. and that's something that you need to consider versus those people that came here just for a week or even a weekend mm -hmm. because they want to spend uh, visiting the city or mm -hmm. different tourist places but in this case, yeah, if you go to a place where you're going to be planning to live, make as much questions as you can. Yeah, yeah. And that was, um, so to let the listeners in, I, I was trying to plan my family to come out and visit me because I haven't seen them in a while. And uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to come out. But that was something that I wanted to ask and make sure that you guys were comfortable if we had extra persons in the house, if that was something that was doable. Um, that was usually the question that people would, or other hosts would either say no, or they were very um, kind of off-putting about it, or they said, yes, but I'll charge them $60 a night or something mm. like that. Mm. And it's like, oh gosh. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's uh, for the listeners. I if you're planning on staying somewhere long stay and you're going to have some guests some friends visit you family um, that is something that you want to ask and make sure uh, one that they have the room two that they're okay with it and then that way there's no uh, friction when you're trying to ask that when you're actually right, in the house right and actually uh what, what we always try to make sure is that everybody will follow the house rules and mm -hmm. the house rule is not only the, for us and in this case that we had two rooms is for everybody so mm. everybody will follow the rules and everybody will be happy yeah yeah and i think that's a good way to look at it too is that this isn't rules for you because i i was so um nervous about doing a longer stay and have it end up almost like a parent to child um relationship mm. where this is your curfew <laughs> this is um you know obviously we're going to be clean in the house but um you know, kind of going into the room um, unannounced or, you know, invading privacy and things like that, that I've heard happen with other persons kind of uh -huh. staying with hosts. Um, but that was not the case with this one. So it was, it was mm -hmm. very respectful, uh, very open environment. So thank you for that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and and uh, that reminds me that uh, when we started doing this, we were, we haven't been able to be the guests of other Airbnb mm -hmm. uh, hosts. So uh, Andrea and I went to Las Vegas last year. We stayed in an Airbnb. Mm. Uh, I went to LA about three months ago and I stayed in an Airbnb. And you will be surprised the different styles of people <laughs> remembering about the curfew. Mm. There are people that are gonna give you a curfew because mm. uh, of different reasons. And I had guests here that one of the questions is that, is there any curfew here? Do I mm. need to be here for certain certain hour? And not at all. Well, yeah. Actually, uh, I think that uh, we all are adults. Mm -hmm. And once you're in the house, then you will figure out. We, we will give you enough uh, uh, liberty to enjoy yourself mm -hmm. uh, while respecting others. But I mm -hmm. think that's a given for everybody that understands the concept. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you're very upfront with, with everything, really, the, ha the house rules. Um, that you had a dog. I know some some uh, hosts don't don't post that information, but uh, you know, Cookie's here. I'll, I'm gonna <laughs> hopefully she'll let me hold her, and I can <laughs> show the listeners because she's cute. Um, what would you say makes a bad um, Airbnb guest? Well, uh, or have you had any experiences? Uh, we have been having I think more than forty guests by now. And there is just one case in which uh, the persons were expecting, uh, you know, if you're going to an Airbnb, there are certain advantages, mm -hmm. uh, a different kind, location, price. Uh, you want to uh, learn from the local mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. 
the surroundings. While in the hotel, you, you don't get that. No. But in the hotel, you have privacy, you have your, uh, a, a person is coming into your room every day and fix things and, mm -hmm. and everything works as a hotel. And this person thought that it was kind of a hotel. Okay. And um, we were open-minded. She wasn't, and she was uh, having a lot of demands. And we, she ended up going to Airbnb because we have a support center in which mm -hmm. we have a dispute. The Airbnb, Airbnb is going to mediate that, mm -hmm. that part. And at the end, Airbnb made her understand that this, this was not a hotel. It was, mm -hmm. and, and actually, this was the first time that she stayed in Airbnb. Okay, so that's understandable. Yeah. And, uh, and at all times, we tried to be very polite with her. We, had everything. we didn't have any problem, but yeah. she was expecting more. Right. Like if we were going to be available for her at any time. Mm -hmm. And that is not the case. Right. We are living in our house. We are having our day jobs and we mm -hmm. have a regular, <laughs> regular uh, uh, life. Mm -hmm. And we like to come home. And if our guest is open for conversation or mm -hmm. sharing a glass of wine, yeah. even a glass of tequila, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we will be happy to do that. But this is not a hotel. And most of the people understand that. Yeah. That's Probably right. this person by now, he, she's continued to stay in different Airbnbs. By now she would understand. And she might decide to go or not go to an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. right. But, um, right. but besides that, all of our guests have been good. Now, what will be a bad guest for, mm -hmm. man, for me that don't respect the, the rules, for example, to, be, uh, to have a lot of noise at mm -hmm. night mm -hmm. that any, anybody will be... Uh, com not, don't like that uh, that noise. Mm -hmm. uh, that probably when they are cooking in the kitchen, and uh, they leave everything uh, dirty, yeah. and they they don't uh, pick up after themselves. Uh, those kind of things. But mm -hmm. so far, I think that people really like to uh, be a good guest, and they go over the house rule, which in our case is not than not more than ten bullets mm -hmm. that yeah, we have uh -huh. it. And it's very understandable, self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think a key thing is that when you receive these uh, guests or these people in your house, as much as if you are open to them mm -hmm. and let them figure out something, because uh, at the beginning, we were trying to give them a tour, show them everything, and, 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 and most of them, okay, yeah, yeah, but uh, I want to go to my room. Mm -hmm. And, and now we let them figure it out okay. to go, and we give them the liberty. Got it. And, Got it. Uh, and yeah, you need to be very open-minded mm -hmm. because most of the people won't like people to go and open drawers in your yeah. kitchen or yeah. any other mm -hmm. place. In our case, we know that we are providing with a service, and mm -hmm. that's it. I know by conversation with other guests is that in other cases, they might not be that open-minded, and sometimes, uh, they only are hosting because of the money. Got and, it. Mm -hmm. and that's something that you need to be uh, aware if mm -hmm. the persons there are just doing it for the money. We have a guest the other day, which <laughs> was a special, uh, special situation. The very first day that this person came, uh, I got an email from Airbnb saying that my guest was complaining about being clean and i said well oh, the house is clean <laughs> to my standards right uh -huh. and the person was here we talked to him and he said you know what i i put a complaint but for my previous Airbnb, uh -huh. so somehow it was mixed up okay and he showed me the pictures of the previous Airbnb. Uh -huh. And actually, my dog house is cleaner than that. <laughs> Obviously, these people wasn't doing Airbnb because mm -hmm. of the right reasons. Right. Just because they want to mm -hmm. get money. And if you can avoid those. Uh, I think that's something that you need to be uh, careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when I was searching and using Airbnb for a previous contract, I was getting ready to um, kind of book with a a lady in Southern California and um, we were kind of going through the processes and then um, she found out that I was going to be there for longer and she's like oh actually um, I prefer sh shorter stays so that I can meet all the all the guests and kind of um, I, I guess she she enjoyed that mean meeting multiple multiple people more so than the cash in the um, 
the stable income that I would have provided. So she, once she found out it was a longer stay, she didn't want me to stay. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very interesting, but I was very, at the same time, like I respected that because that was her why of joining Airbnb. So a little bit of side income, but at the same time, she's like meeting people. And so she wanted those frequent visitors. So I thought, I thought that was pretty interesting. Now that you mentioned that, and and the reason why we are open to long stays is because, yes, it's very interesting to know people, but also it's very demanding. Every, every three or five days you are, uh, resetting your your hosting mm-hmm. and in the long term you don't do that in, in long term Absolutely. so if you take a combination of both i think that you will have uh, the the best of both worlds mm-hmm. yeah. uh, one 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 is going to provide a yes a steady income okay mm-hmm. but the other one is going to provide with the relationships that you want and uh, in, in your case for example we have been very happy and <laughs> very open and sometimes well, even we are not planning to have a long conversation, we end up even with, <laughs> with, with, a, with sharing a, a glass of wine. Uh-huh. Very, very nice. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. And that's the thing that I like about this. Yeah, absolutely. And I do too. Um, and that's something I wanted to kind of talk about, especially your culture coming from uh, Mexico. And uh, you, there was a night that you had me uh, taste the Mexican flag. And I forget the three ingredients, but it was, uh, you educated me on tequila, and then it was the red, white, and the green. Right. Um, can you talk about the different tequilas? Yeah, sure. And then also what the Mexican flag is. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not an expert, though I like tequila very much. Uh, in tequila world, uh, there is a very traditional drink in Mexico. We, uh, we really enjoy it. The, the, the drink that you're mentioning, the, the little flag is called Banderita, which is a comparison of, a comparison of the Mexican flag, which is uh, uh, red, white, and green. And the green in the drink is the lime juice. The white is the tequila. Mm-hmm. And then the red is a special uh, beverage called Sangrita, which most people uh, think that this, this is kind of a... Um, other, other red, red drink. What, what is the name of this? Um, uh, oh, I, I forgot. <laughs> but this is a special recipe coming from, from Mexico, even it's a, it's, it's a spicy one, mm. as you remember. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you, you can enjoy that, um, in a conversation or, so, or any, any place. The, the, the thing is that some people are used to see in the movies or in, or in the television shows that tequila is just drinking like uh-huh, that. And, uh-huh. And then uh, that's that's that, right? That's mm-hmm. over. Mm-hmm. It's not tequila because of the different grades of alcohol and sugar. You can grade them in white, rested, and aged tequila. Being aged tequila, the smoothest. So mm-hmm. that's the tequila that you want to enjoy by sipping it mm-hmm. little by little. Yeah. And obviously with, uh, with some food. <laughs> <laughs> some, uh, yeah, that was the first time I'd heard of aged tequila. And you were saying that's something relatively new that the oldest aged tequila you can find is well, what? Well, relatively, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, there was rested tequila, white, te- white tequila, which is the original one. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's the tequila. But marketing started to find new ways to expand the, the, the people that likes tequila. And they came mm-hmm. out with the rested tequila, which is a little bit more than sugar. And, and, and it stays in the, in the bar- barrels a little lo- longer. Okay. And then the aged tequila. Now you can find tequila as you can find uh, um, whiskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have 10, 15 years tequila, aged tequila, yeah. and very smooth ones. Yeah. So. It was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was very good. Uh, and, and again, this is like the kind of things that I like to share with people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have been talking about books. We have been talking about people. We have mm-hmm. been talking about movies, yep. beverages. The other day that you came from uh, Napa Valley, uh, you brought mm-hmm. very nice wine. Mm-hmm. So now this is enriching everybody else's uh, experiences. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about yeah. uh, doing yeah. the Airbnb thing. Yeah. The wine was uh, bought by a, a friend, Jordan. So if you are listening to this, this is your shout out that you were asking for. <laughs> <laughs> very good, Jordan. It was a nice wine. <laughs> it was very good wine. Um, and then, yeah, so that that was very nice and then we got to go through how to drink wine if you're doing a wine t- tasting you want to go was it the dryer to sweet the 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 dryer 
Well, if you want, like in like in, with wines, you need to go through the less strong. Like we're talking about wines, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Cabernet is the the, the strongest uh, version of red wine, while uh, Pinot Noir and Zinfandel are the lowest. In the middle, you will find a series of other types of wines that we can spend a whole day <laughs> talking about it. But your palate need your palate will need to start with the smooth ones going up to the stronger ones, okay. uh, like Cabernet. Got it. And then your palate is going to savor them nicely. Yeah, yeah. Something I didn't think about, I just, I mean, I would show up to, I haven't done very many wine tastings, but a few, I would just point, <laughs> they would get the wine, they'd bring it out, and then I would be happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, what is one of your favorite stories for, um, one of your guests staying? Well, uh, we have a couple from Australia back in January. And they, this was a lovely couple. Uh, they were in their 50s and 60s. And they were going around the world mm. uh, in a trip that lasted about 10 months. And they were talking about all the different experiences they got. They got cruises, they got train, they got flights, obviously, mm -hmm. boats, and uh, they have all kinds of experiences. And even one night, they spent uh, the night making dinner for us. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was very nice for them. And uh, we're still in contact. And uh, they were telling us this, this story, which for us was kind of curious <laughs> that in one of their cruises uh, they they noted that everybody know each other and they were senior citizens okay. and the reason was because they go from one cruise to another oh wow and the reason was because it, uh, they were paying less going in cruise river cruisers mm -hmm. than staying uh, in, 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 a, in a home uh, oh, wow. uh, for, for elder people. Uh -huh. So they were saying, if we stay in the, in the, in the senior's home, yes, we have mostly doctors. They have a lot of rules. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go outside. You cannot do this. A lot of rules. Mm -hmm. In here, there are doctors, but that's not the emphasis. We are here to injure ourselves. And every time that we need to go to a hospital, they will let us go uh, get off of, of, of the cruise and Got go it. to a local hospital. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and they needed to do that. And because they have uh, travel insurance, they were able to get off the boat, get to a, a hospital, and two days later, catch the same boat. Got it. And, uh, and then uh, travel insurance was taking care of this. So wow. that was a learning experience for us. And, <laughs> and, and Andrea and I was looking at each other and saying, oh, <laughs> It's not about idea. It's exploring that idea. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. The other day we have a person that uh, we, we had a new moon. And, you know, we are located mm -hmm. right in the edge of the San Pablo Bay. Mm -hmm. And this person started to make a lot of histories. And he knew everything about stars. Okay. And, they, and he was telling us about constellations and everything. And... and, and we just needed to bring the wine. <laughs> and everybody had a very nice evening that oh, time. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Really so, cool. so, yeah. Uh, uh, we don't need to go to a bar. We don't need to go to any place <laughs> right here in our home. We can have very nice people Absolutely. spending time and conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of conversations. And um, we were talking about, you know, your family. And I was talking about my family. And uh, your, your son and daughter are in uh, digital animation and working with um, video game companies and things like that. Uh, and one of the most recent conversations we had was about the Disney movie Coco, which I still haven't watched yet, but I'm preparing myself because I hear it's, it's pretty sad towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> so um, listeners, I'll probably, uh, uh, you'll, you'll hear about it, I'm sure, once I start watching it. But uh, can you talk a little bit about that movie? Because you were very impressed with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be prepared with your clinics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, that movie, I believe that Pixar... And I'm very familiar with Pixar because uh, my children are in the industry. So they tell me not only about the movies, but uh, the, the insights of the studios yeah. and everything. And although they don't, none of, none of them is working for them. But in this case, uh, I believe that Pixar needed to hire Mexican consultants to really get the message across of how the traditions in Mexico are followed. 
-hmm. And Coco, this movie, is a movie related to the Dia de los Muertos, which is the day, the day of the dead, mm -hmm. what we call here Halloween. And actually in Mexico, we celebrated two days. One is for children and one is for adults. Okay. And there, there are different, different uh, cultural um, aspects here. Andrea is from the northern part of Mexico, south of the United States. I was born in Mexico City. So even though we are in the same country, we experience different, different traditions. Mm -hmm. When she heard that in Mexico, we use in those two days, go to the cemetery, and start having picnics and having mariachi bands and mm. having uh, all kinds of uh, festivities. She was kind of making a funny face saying, what? <laughs> and, and, and I explained her, I tried to explain her why we did that. Well, it was hard for me to really let, the, let her know and we had been we had been married for more than twenty five years, mm. 20, more than thirty days by now. Oh, wow. thirty years, mm -hmm. and um, and it was until she saw Coco that a lot of the conversation we have about that day that she seems not to be convinced about it. Mm. Now Coco, oh, okay. <laughs> I remember you were saying that, uh, and I remember. I said, okay. And um, and yes, if you see that movie, you will definitely see a, one of the most uh, well-done movies based on traditions in Mexico. Good, great, mm -hmm. great. And you were telling me that sometimes uh, traditions get changed based on movies and how there was, um, I'll let you explain it, but there's a certain movie that kind of started a, a tradition that hadn't been there before right, once the movie right. came out. Well, the, the James Bond, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was one or two James Bond, James Bond movie that started with the Dia de los Muertos in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And there is a parade, a very nice parade, actually. Mm -hmm. And when I first saw that in the movie, I said, oh, that's, that's a good idea. I wonder why we haven't do that yet. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, a lot of people get together and say, did you see the movie? Well, that, that's what we want to do from now on. Mm -hmm. And now it's a new tradition <laughs> that came from James Bond. Uh, and, and I'm sure that there were different parades, but not like this one. Yeah. And now every year, if you go to El Dia de los Muertos, to mm -hmm. the El Zócalo, which is the downtown part of Mexico mm -hmm. City, you will be able to see all kinds of nice things related to the day. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, <laughs> but that, that didn't exist before yeah, that the was, movie. <laughs> that was interesting. So the movie came out with the parade, and then um, then all of a sudden there's the parade. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't there before. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, well, before we kind of dig into this, is it flan? Mm -hmm. Flan? Yeah, it's and a so, Mexican flan. Yeah. And so we're, we're enjoying some flan today. This will be my first flan ever. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it was a uh, gelatin with milk. Yeah, gelatin okay. based with uh, on milk and uh -huh. different pieces of different flavors of uh, gelatin inside. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because um, when I when I came here, I just realized growing up, we um, when I was uh, staying with you know my grandmother and she was raising me, um, she, she would make uh, like poor man's rice where we would put uh, cinnamon and sugar and uh, milk into this this rice and it was very sweet and a lot of people that i grew up with didn't do that and they're like why you eat sweet rice like no you're supposed to have it with like chicken and all this other like savory stuff and um so i always called it that and then once um i kind of came here to california and we, we were talking um it's actually a mexican dish <laughs> arroz con leche <laughs> so rice with milk um, and that, that was just something funny. I was like, oh, okay, finally somebody who's had this, because <laughs> it's like one of my favorite foods. Yeah. And it's so easy to make. Um, and usually at like potlucks and stuff, I'll, I'll bring that, mm. just because it is easy to make. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> um, anything that you would like to tell the listeners um, that we haven't covered today? Well, I have been noticing because uh, every time, not every time, but uh, 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 when, when, when you're here with your computer, I hear you even... The other day, I was looking at one of your videos, and uh -huh. all of a sudden, I show up in, in the back, and that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't in purpose. Even my wife uh, told me, "What are you doing?" That? But uh, but uh, knowing that your audience audience is uh, PTs that are traveling, mm. uh, that's very honorable and very respectful respectful career for me because mm. uh, I don't think that a lot of people will be able to do that in order mm. to advance in their careers and advance in their 
in their mindset and growing as a person. And uh, f- f- one, one thing is that you're helping people mm-hmm. through your career to get better, to, to, to get uh, healthy. Mm-hmm. And the other one is that you are nomads. That you <laughs> yourself. And that's a very interesting combination, but I think that uh, the, the mindset of the people doing that uh, requires that our match with the mindset of people like people do, doing the Airbnb mm-hmm. to be open-minded yeah. and uh, be respectful, get fun. Mm-hmm. We, we can be to this life to, to do that, <laughs> to enjoy our success and get fun. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I believe that if you're open-minded, don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> and if some issue can arise uh, during the stay of uh, Airbnb, first thing to do is raise your hand and be honest and, mm. and be open to, yeah. to whatever yeah. needs to do there. Yeah. And, um, and I think we have been hearing some horror stories. The other day I was uh, talking to a person that, and actually that this happened, I think, in California also, that uh, uh, get Airbnb guests were leaving and they, they were having their luggage put in the car. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden a police car came into with, with them and they wanted to arrest them. And I think this was in the news. And it was because a neighbor supposedly the neighbor wave at these people and because they didn't wave back, but they are in their mind mm. thinking about their plans, thinking mm. about what's next. They are not their neighbors. Uh-huh. So they were waving, didn't wave back. And then this person, which by the way was an old lady, assumed <laughs> that something happened uh-huh. and she called the police. Got it. And the police wasn't treating this case uh, in the right way so they end up in the station and oh, wow. explaining themselves and that caused it. this uh, guest mm-hmm. lose their their flight and there were some oh, consequences wow. Wow. Okay. airbnb took care of them got it but in the meantime there was something that happened yeah. because somebody didn't understand right right and uh, you and i have been talking about when you met with neighbors mm-hmm. what to do and what not to do <laughs> because we know them uh, we don't so right. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and it's not because we're hiding something, it's because we know them, so we don't want anybody to be uncomfortable. Right, right. absolutely. And I, I think it's just generally be, being, like you said, respectable. Like we had um, another guest that came in the other day, he was knocking on the door, I I, I answered it. I said, oh, you w- wait right here and I'll go get uh, Jaime. And well, I called you Jamie at the time, but <laughs> went, went upstairs and got you. And uh, that way you could be the one that welcomed him yeah. into the house uh, versus me just, you know, letting some, some potential oh, yeah. rando. <laughs> Which, by the way, one, one, one day happened, but didn't, didn't happen anything, anything bad, but that can happen. That's one thing that as a guest, as a host, I need to be very open mm-hmm. because uh, there are a lot of things that are not under your control mm-hmm. and you, we're people in this as any other business is a people business. Right. And uh, we need to be very open with them. And um, and I think that's that's a good start. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I appreciate you, you know, going out of your way and you're treating me very well as a guest, not not as a, a person who's paying rent, um, as a friend. And I really do appreciate that. And I know your story was you, you had uh, your daughter who had a car that bro- broke down on the road and somebody like stopped and helped her out and things like that. And so just kind of paying it forward. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. She's, she's living now in Minnesota. So uh, Minnesotans are very nice people. <laughs> well, the ones that we have been in contact with and, um, and there was this time, which it was knowing she got a, black, a flat tire and mm-hmm. somebody helped her. Mm-hmm. And I said, Oh, okay. I really appreciate that. So mm. I want to give back to yeah. anybody that will be needing something right. from other person, not not precisely from a father or mother, uh-huh. because that's that's not the case. <laughs> but if our guests or anybody else needs something, we're we are open to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Doing your one kind thing per day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very easy to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, everyone, Jaime lives here in Pinole, California, which is on the East Bay. So if you are um, getting a contract here. There's a lot of travel positions that come through this area. If you're listening to this, you ever have a um, spot in the area and you want an excellent place to stay, I highly recommend this spot. Um, just get a, in contact with me. Me and Jaime will be in touch after I, after my stay here, of course. Yeah. And um, I can get you two in contact and uh, you can 
find a nice, nice home to stay with, uh, with Cookie. <laughs> if she comes here, if she comes here. <laughs> there you <Okay>. go. <laughs> she let me hold her the other day. <laughs> she gets, there you go. <laughs> hey, there's Cookie. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she greets me every, every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Well, if you are looking for the next uh, episode, I officially launched them on the New Medical Nomads podcast page. Um, if you have any questions about Airbnb, um, being a guest, um, or now being a host, if you have a question for me, just reach out to me. Or you can join New Medical Nomads group on Facebook. Um, if you're listening to YouTube, uh, through YouTube or through iTunes or any other app, um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking, commenting. The more engagement that these posts gets, the more people that will see it, ultimately the more people that we will be able to help, which is the whole point of this podcast. So everybody have a great week. Everybody have great stays at Airbnb and everybody have safe travels. Bye.